throwing off the hump, S cracks, and how I've been able to avoid them. Okay, I'm Jeff. This is my Potter's Journal for 2023. This is my Potter's Journal. Okay, last year's resolution, make a thousand pots in the year. This year, just to make what I make. Um, not to count, but already I've got an order for 200 espresso shots. If I can get them done today, I'm at like 80 something, I will be ahead of last year. Okay, let's see what's going on in the studio today. Throwing off the hump. To get this bottom bit of clay anytime I'm centering something, I do it with a rib. Otherwise, my thumbnail gets torn down to nothing. And throwing off the hump, this is the only way if you're going to go really small below. <laughs> oh, I think the smallest I found I could throw was comfortably was six or seven ounces, but um, to go any smaller, yeah, this is the way to do it. Um, the problem with S cracks, I'm going back and forth over the bottom, compressing it right now, but the real trick I will show at the end. And that's after they come off the wheel. I went from, it seemed like, <laughs> having a majority of them get an S crack to um, not experiencing it at all. Uh, in the last kiln opening, which you can see, these finished in um, the last, I'll put a link for last fall's video opening uh, kiln load for Red Hawk Coffee Brewers. It's also hard to judge the bottom since there's uh, it's not on the wheel. But way up here, you can't check it with a needle. Now on these, and actually with um, shot glass shot glasses, as well as the espressos, um, the commercial glass ones are heavy on the bottom um, since they're wider on the top. And narrow on the bottom it gives some weight and gives them some stability so it's probably all right for them to be a little bit heavy and I'm able to get that a nice shape just the way my hands fit it um, I couldn't say why I've been coming back in with the rib but um, probably not necessary if you had a carved rib with a, you could uh, be putting some lines in there. Okay, and although I did the base with my thumb, thumbnail, I've still been coming in and cleaning it up a little bit better with the rib. Okay, rounding off the bottom there, and here. Okay, a decorative line spiraling up, not straight around and then straight around and straight around, but spiraling up. Okay, getting the water out of the center. Another reason you would have an S crack is if you left that too wet in there. And the hard thing to cut off the wheel and cut it off straight. So with the needle, I've been coming in and just giving it a little start. Um, I've seen others that can cut in there with a knife and take it off, but um, yeah, I think that's um, actually little pots that they then put a foot on. So these are not going to be pruned, trimmed. Okay, and sometimes to get under it to lift it off, I have to push into the clay. And there we go. One nice little lift off. Opening it up, okay, again, when you pull that up, sometimes uh, it opens up a space, there's a space that you're closing in where you may trap air, so I um, plunge my thumb down into there while I'm still centering the clay and bringing it up. hard to 
I was away from Clay, what now? I, it, it was. It was over two months. Um, but um, it was nice knowing exactly where to start. I do have some special orders um, that are a little more complex. I actually want to do a series of pots um, for a pitcher and basin and actually be able to give them a choice. And here's where my thumbs together, okay, the two hands connect, they're always important, but are giving this a real nice taper and flare out naturally that there's really no reason to come back in here with the rib. And I am not. Okay, these are all a little different. Not meant to all be the same. I keep evolving a, a variation on the design. Originally I was putting these little lines down here, but realized when I lifted them off, um, it was, yeah, sometimes, um, okay, I was losing the line in a spot where my thumb or fingers might touch it. I didn't say is I place the wire on there and with it spinning slowly it pulls the one side round and then this one okay it follows that groove nicely I, I was having trouble with that when I first started doing this so um, the little starter with the needle okay has been a big help and now in the Eastern Mediterranean, they are well known for throwing pieces off the hump. I spotted this at a yard sale once and picked it up. Okay, earthenware. I'm not sure if it was made as a tourist item or to actually use. It has things for drainage in there. So, but they would know the secrets. Well known for throwing off the hump, they would know the secrets. The true secrets for preventing the S-Tracks. And I turned it over and took a look. And apparently, okay, they don't. So January 6th today, it was only 28 of these. On the 4th it was 25, on the 3rd it was 60. Okay, here's the secret to um, make, preventing the S-crack. Um, first I'm cleaning up the bottom of this there, and then, okay, around the edge there, and then compressing the bottom a little bit on the outside, but not much, um, because you're just pressing against there. But then it's the inside. I compress the bottom going one way and another way, turn it three or four times and keep doing that. And I went from seemingly having <laughs> more of them get the S cracks on the bottom that made it worth even throwing off the hump. What's the labor saving device good for if um, you're not going to have a pot? to actually, I think, I don't remember getting a single one in the last firing. Okay, compressing, turn, compress, turn, compress, and another method of fixing these. Okay, if they get it in the drying process before you're firing them, um, I um, will turn you actually, I guess, to broken arrow. And I didn't actually give it away her secret in the comments but um, maybe here I'll say what I do. Okay, recycle them, reclaim them. If it uh, happens before they've been fired, don't try to fix it. <laughs> Take less time just to make another one. Okay. And I've moved them all out to the cold side of the studio so they don't dry too fast by the wood stove and so you can see all in one place that I did get 113 made by January 6th. That means I am how many pots ahead of last year? 13 pots ahead of last year. I will get the 
next hundred made here so I will have um, I'll be well ahead of last year even though it's not a competition okay this week I there were two doctor's appointments I forgot about I was cleaning up okay needles under this bench you couldn't move in the studio here a couple days ago and as I let these evolve, here is, okay, the shape and form I currently like. Fits nice in the hand. We got the little lines down there to col uh, collect a glaze. And I can show you what some of these will look like. Oh, for me, the hard part is getting started, okay? And getting started is done. Um, New Year's resolution, okay, Potter's Journal book reviews every third Thursday this year. Okay, stop back and see if I do that. Um, and stop back and see what's going on in the studio next week. Okay, December 6th too. No, it's January 6th. Okay, so January 6th, that makes this what, like Christmas all over again? And then it was December 5th or 6th. That was St. Nicholas Day. How am I going to keep track of this? Maybe a calendar? Oh, uh, but this isn't going to do me any good. We got two calendars in one. Well, Thursday, Potter's Journal book review. It will be right there.